By 4.30 p.m., we walk into the train station on Nasa Road to catch the 5.30 train to Namamve. People leaving their workplaces begin trickling in after a long day's toil. There are no delays in ticketing, and soon we are taking in the photo exhibition that has strategically been set up on the platform. We board the crowded coach, and at exactly 5.30 p.m., the whistle goes off, and we pull out of the station for a train ride that has cost us 1,000 shillings. This coach has the capacity to take over 150 people, and the entire train can take over 700 people. It's congested, it's hot, and it can get dusty. The swaying motion of the train is a bit scary, but the sight of a sprawling slum in Chinawataka, built right on the rail tracks, is more worrying. One shudders at the thought of the loss of lives in case of a derailment. At 5.30 p.m., 20 minutes after we commence this journey, we descend back into Chireka, a chaotic suburb on the Kampala Ginger Highway. If we had used a car, this journey would have perhaps taken us two hours and cost us 30,000 shillings in fuel. So could an expanded passenger service be the answer to the city's road congestion? It is time-saving because you don't take a lot of time in the jam. Actually, from my place to here, it takes 25 minutes and it's always on city. So I'm lucky enough that when I board off the train, I don't need to get another means of transport to my place of work. It's not because we can't afford the other means, but because we can also never see which our place of work early enough. The train is filled to capacity. I, th I feel it is filled to more than its capacity. It's only one train with five coaches, but it transports 2,500 people every day. This means about 200 Matatu taxis, which usually congest Ginger Road, were put out of business. Kampala was designed to handle 45,000 vehicles, but now over 2 million cars enter the city every day. A 2017 World Bank study found that Uganda has lost 2.8 trillion shillings in traffic congestion. It has economic impacts on the fuel, uh, it has got economic impacts on the time lost on the road. You lose a lot of time, hours, and those hours cumulatively over a period of one year, you'll find that probably you wouldn't have needed leave because the time you would have spent on leave has all been wasted in the jam. One billion shillings is allocated annually to run the train service. But more coaches need to be bought and the steps need to be modified. They could also introduce a business class to cater for the passengers who like to travel in comfort. A feasibility study is currently being undertaken with the aim of extending the train service to Mukono, Port Bell, Nalukolongo, Chengera and Bujuko. The expansion project, worth 230 billion shillings, is expected to begin in 2021. We are doing this with Kampala cases uh, here and the uh, Wakiso district, Mukono district, and MPG. These are uh, the projects which uh, have a lifespan, for example, the, 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 the permanent way is around over 50, 50 years. Of course, trains are bulky, and a light metro service like the one used in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, would have been better to connect the city to places like Entebbe and Kawempe. The biggest cost would be procurement of land, the buying of land, and uh, most of the projects that we have been handling have suffered because of that. So right now, how do we serve the general public by utilizing the assets that we have. I know it's a lot of money that is required to establish, for instance, a metro system in Kampala, but uh, you can look at uh, options like PPP. We get private investors who can come and partner with these agencies. While innovations like the Kampala flyover project may streamline traffic, it is not the ultimate solution because it will attract more cars into the city. On the other hand, an improved mass transit system is a welcome relief to our roads. Gillian Nantume, NTV.